And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Indeed, we bless God for this opportunity to be able to come to church one more time. Uh, it is time for us to begin our morning worship service. At this time, we ask everyone to stand for call to worship. The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Amen. You may be seated. Uh, again, we thank God for all of your presence, uh, all of the staff that's here, along with the members uh, that's here. We are operating at uh, somewhere around 10 to 15 percent right now, and we just thank God for your uh, compliance. Amen. We uh, thank God for our uh, music department. I couldn't help but to notice that uh, Brother Taylor was playing the, the famous song, Lord, Help Me to Hold Out. Amen. Amen. That was my one hit wonder when I was with the male choir. Uh, Lord, help me to hold out in such a fitting song for such a time as this. Uh, Lord, help us to hold out until our change has come. Uh, we thank God for, for our music department, as we stated before. We just thank God for all of you. We're so uh, grateful to God to have my lovely wife, Lady Katina, with us uh, on this morning. Amen. We bless God for her presence. Uh, we also thank God for our uh, pastor emeritus, Pastor J.P. Walker. Uh, we just thank God for him. We thank God for uh, Sister Florida Walker in her absence. And we just thank God for all of you. Uh, we, we want to encourage you to uh, uh, continue to pray, continue to pray that God will continue to bless us, that he will keep us healthy, that uh, this transition of regathering would continue to flow smoothly, that we can uh, all get back to church uh, eventually. Uh, so we ask that you continue to pray. Another thing I asked you guys to do for me, uh, do for us uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we ask that you will pray that God will move on the hearts of those that are dumping uh, uh, trash on the uh, James Avenue coming around to the uh, church. Uh, while we're praying, let us be vigilant as well. Uh, the Lord did tell us to watch as we pray. If you know uh, if you get word of anyone that you know that's dumping out there, amen, we, we want to make sure that we report them. Report them to the uh, local authorities, to our police uh, department. Uh, we, we've been in contact with our alderman, uh, uh, the, the director of the streets. Uh, we're going to uh, reach out to the mayor, to the chief of police. We want to make sure God has blessed us uh, to be able to put our church in this location and we want to make sure that we continue to do our part to make sure that it continues to look nice. So we ask that you will uh, please work with us. If you know of anyone uh, that's dumping on, on, on this street, let us make sure that we turn them in. And it's okay uh, it's, uh, for you to call the alderman, for you to call uh, Alderman Brown, call Mayor Truly, uh, call the director of the uh, street department, uh, call the uh, 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 chief of police. Uh, it's going to take all of us. I think we said a while ago, all hands on deck, uh, whatever it takes. We're going to uh, schedule uh, coming in the near future. We're going to schedule where we're going to go out and pick up uh, trash. Yeah. But we want to make sure that we're working with them and not working for anyone uh, and doing someone else's job. We just want to make sure that we're doing our part. Uh, amen. At this time, um, we're going to have the reading of the scripture uh, will be done by uh, uh, Brother Timothy Kincaid. After that, we will have uh, Miss Katie Wilder. She's going to come up and she's going to uh, make an announcement uh, concerning the uh, pastoral installation that will take uh, place on next Sunday. And after her, we will have the uh, prayer done by Pastor Emeritus uh, J.P. Walker. God bless you. May God keep you. Good morning. Scripture coming from James, the first chapter, beginning with verse 1. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brother, count it all joy when ye fall into divers temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patient. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it all men liberally and unbraided, not and it shall be given him. 
but let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavered is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. Let the brothers, let the brother of low degree rejoice in that he exists exalted. But the rich in that he is made low, because as the flower of the grass he shall pass away. For the sun is no sooner risen with, with the burning heat, but the withered grass and the flower thereof falleth, and the grace of the fashion of it perished. So also shall the rich man fade away in his ways. I read you James, the first chapter, verses 1 through 11. May God have a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and doers of his holy word. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice in what and be glad in it. Amen. To our pastor, Pastor Frederick Walker, to Pastor J.P. Walker, to all of God's children. I come this morning to remind all the members, don't forget, members and friends, don't forget on March the 28th, our pastor installation service. And we want all of us to come together and show our love and honor and gratefulness for all the service and work that he has done and where we're going to in our next chapter in our life. The committee just select the amount of $75, but pay whatever God put on your heart. It's a blessing to be able to give. And I know God has been good to us because we're still here by his grace and his mercy. And let's be able to share that with each other. And God has been good to all of us. And you know what? In Matthew chapter 10, 41 and 42, it said, he who received a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet, what? Reward. And he who received a righteous man in the righteous name shall also receive a righteous man reward. And whosoever give to one of these little ones a cup, just a cup, Pastor, a cup of cold water in the name of the disciples, surely I say unto you, you have no means to lose the reward. So let us come together as a church family and shut, shut around him and show our support. And also on that special day, let's come with praying and thankfulness that we are still here. God give us blessing to bless others. Amen. Let's share that love. Spread the word. You spread everything else. Don't forget this great celebration. Amen. Thank you. Almighty God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord God, we come now. We come with a heart of thanksgiving. Thanking you for the many blessings that you have already bestowed upon us. Father, we thank you. You kept watch over us last night. And then, Father, you wouldn't let no hurt, harm, or danger come up on us. We, we, we don't know how many times the deaf angels tempt to get in the bed with us, but you told them to behave. Yes. Father, we thank you. thank you. And then right early this morning, you woke us into a day that's been coming ever since creation. Yes. We say thank you. thank you. And after waking us, you gave us a portion of health and strength. Yes. Heavenly Father, you gave us food on our table. Uh -huh. You even gave us the clothes on our back. And then, Father, you gave us a mind to come out to the house of worship one more time. You, Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, Father, for our pastor. Yes. We, we pray yes. that you would keep your arms around him. Yes. Lead him and guide him, Father, in every way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this church and all of the members. Yes. Father, we thank you for those that are present this morning. Yes. We even thank you, Father, for those that have a desire to come, but is unable to come. Yes. Father, we thank you. Thank you You've been so kind to us. Father, you have looked beyond our faults and saw our every need. Yes. Now, Lord, we pray right now that you will send the Holy Spirit into this place.
Father, we pray that you will bless the pastor to preach your word this morning. Heavenly Father, that men, women, girls, and boys will fall out with the ways of the world. Come over on your side. Now, Lord, we pray that you will remember those that are sick today. Remember those that are bereaved today. Father, we pray that you remember those that are going through something today. Father, we know you, Ava. You said in your word that you will never leave us nor forsaken us. And then, Lord, you said that uh, we can cast all of our cares upon you because you care for us. Now, Lord, uh, walk with us. Talk with us, Father. We pray that you will keep your loving arms around us. Father, as we travel this tease and journey, we pray, Heavenly Father, that you will guide us every step of the way. Now, Lord, uh, now, Lord, when we have went the last mile of the way, we got to come off of this smoker battlefield to stir none, uh, no more, Father. We pray, Heavenly Father, when we go somewhere in a dying room, uh, when our head must press a dying pillow, Pray that you will come close to the that will lay a head on your breast. Breathe our life out of sweet air. These and other blessings we ask. In your son Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen and amen. And the people of God said amen. amen. Indeed, we thank God for our pastor emeritus. Amen. We're just so grateful to God to have him present with us on uh, today, uh, as we are with everyone that's present with us on uh, today. We, we, we thank and we bless God for uh, Brother Kincaid with the reading of the scripture, Sister Katie, uh, for reminding us about the pastoral installation on next week. Amen. She said um, they were asking $75 or what you can. Uh, here's what we will advise you to do. We strongly encourage you that uh, uh, what you can beyond your tithes. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let's make sure you pay your tithes. Now, uh, I don't want God's money. Amen. Amen. I, I don't want it, Brother Blackman. Amen. So you give him his. And then what you're able to do over that, uh, we're grateful for it. Amen. And, we, and God will bless you for, uh, for that. Uh, there is a word, is a word. Uh, from the Lord on this morning, and it's found in the gospel as recorded by St. Luke. The gospel as recorded by St. Luke, the seventh chapter, when we began reading at verse 18. Uh, we ask that you would pray with us and pray for us, for we definitely need your, your prayers on this morning. It's the gospel as recorded by St. Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning reading at verse 18. 18. While you're turning, we're so grateful to God for all of those that's joining us via Facebook and those that will watch it on YouTube. We think and we, we pray that uh, you will be blessed by uh, the service on today. The gospel is recorded by St. Luke, the seventh chapter, beginning reading at verse 18. You should find these words. And the disciples of John showed him of all these things. And John calling unto him, Two of his disciples sent them to Jesus, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? When the men were come unto him, they said, John Baptist have sent us unto thee, saying, Are thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind, he gave sight. Then Jesus answering said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Uh, again, verse 22. Then Jesus answering said unto them, 
go your way and tell John what things ye have seen and heard, how that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor, the gospel is preached. May God add a blessing to the readers, the hearers, and most of all the doers of his holy and divine word. Like the use for a thought on this morning, see for yourself. See for yourself. This phrase or this idiom, uh, it simply means to see or experience something firsthand as a means of proving to oneself that it is true or accurate. It's sort of like saying, uh, you don't have to take my word for it. Uh, if you want some evidence, see for yourself. Uh, see, this morning I can tell you several uh, great things about Jesus. Uh-huh. Pastor, I just think it's better if they see for themselves. I, I could stand here and I can tell you that he's a mind regulator. Yeah. He's a heart fixer, a burden barrier, way out of no way. But you really ought to see for yourself. I can tell you that he's a doctor in a sick room, a lawyer in a courtroom, a friend for the friendless, a mother when mother is dead and gone, a father for the fatherless. But you really ought to see for yourself. I can tell you that he's a tear wiper. He's a midnight rider. He's an all-day keeper. He opened doors that no man can shut. He closed doors that no man can open. But you really ought to see for yourself. I can tell you that he'll walk with you. He'll talk with you. He'll hold your hand while the, the storms of life are raging. I can tell you that uh, he can save your soul, soul to the utmost. Uh-huh. But I think you really ought to see, see for your, yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And Brother Kincaid, I think that this is uh, in a nutshell what Jesus was telling uh, the disciples of John the Baptist. See, there, were, there, there was an issue. Uh, John was in prison at this particular time. So he couldn't come and ask this question to Jesus, but he sent two of his disciples. And, he, and the question they simply asked him, are you the one? Or should we continue to look for another? Now, there are many schools of thought about why John would uh, send and ask this question to Jesus. Some, some, some scholars say that he sent uh, his disciples for their benefit. Uh-huh. They say that he sent uh, the disciples because some of them were skeptical of Jesus being the Christ, the Messiah. Because here, uh, John, his friend, his cousin, uh, his forerunner, he's in prison and Jesus is doing everything else, but he hadn't come to the aid of John the Baptist. That's it. That's it. So it said that uh, some, some scholars said he sent them for their behalf that they may believe that he uh, was and he is the Messiah. Uh-huh. Others say that uh, he sent them for his own benefit because he himself was wondering. Yeah. Uh, and and I, so once was someone is asking the question, which one is right? And I would say yes. yes. Both of them are right. John yeah. disciples, they were somewhat skeptical of Jesus being the, the Messiah. Uh, they because they their allegiance was to John the Baptist. Yeah. And uh, you you remember John said, "I must decrease; wow. he must increase." Uh, that, that was good news to them because John is their 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 uh, leader. Uh-huh. And then uh, some would say, "Well, why would John? How could it be John?" Yeah. Well, let's let's look at this thing, if you would. Can you see some of uh, John's uh, the Baptist disciples coming to him? The text begins by saying, uh, and the disciples of John showed him of all these things. Yeah. I'm pretty sure John was anxious to hear about Jesus and, uh, and, and about the uh, Messianic movement. Yeah. John was excited to hear this. Uh, he's in prison, and these guys, they, they, they've seen Jesus working. They come back, and they, they show all these things. What things did they tell John about? Well, it's in the, the chapter. When you go back and you begin at verse 1, uh-huh. you find out some of the things that happened in uh, the seventh chapter of Luke. Yeah. Well, the first thing that happened in Luke, the, the seventh chapter, it talks about a centurion. Uh-huh. 
had a servant that was sick. And he sent to Jesus, and when he sent to Jesus, uh, uh, he, he wanted him to just come and heal his servant. And while Jesus was on his way, he sent some messengers back and told him, look, uh, I'm a man of authority. And I say, uh, come, they come. I tell them to go, they go. I said, do this or do that, they do it. He said, now I know that you also are a man of authority. And just like I can speak and things will happen, you can speak and things can happen also. Amen. So you don't have to come, just speak the word. Speak the word. You know the story, Jesus healed uh, his servant. Yes, and then Jesus went on and there was a, a widow woman from Nain. Uh -huh. She was headed to the cemetery with her only son. Jesus, he met them. He was going into the city. They were coming out of the city. He stopped the funeral procession. Put his hand on the beer and told the young man, get up and go back home with your, your mother. They told John about all these things, but uh, there was something that was missing in their report, Pastor. Yes, yeah, they, there was something missing in their report to John the Baptist about what Jesus was doing. Uh -huh. What was missing? They didn't say anything about him eliminating the injustice of men. They didn't say anything about him freeing men from uh, a tyranny or ruling of others. They didn't say anything about uh, uh, the great Messiah who would come and take over the world Amen. and rule in righteousness, executing judgment upon all men and nation. They didn't say anything about that. But uh, as a matter of fact, but they did say some, uh, what they did notice was what John noticed was in Luke 5 and 16. When the people were aroused and ready to crown Jesus as king, uh -huh. what did Jesus do? Jesus slipped out. He withdrew himself. Yeah. He discouraged such actions. This was in line with what John the Baptist knew of a Messiah. Uh -huh. So I know what some are saying. Uh, not John the Baptist having doubt. Not John the Baptist wondering, is this the same John the Baptist? Yeah. The one that when his mother was pregnant, six months pregnant with him. Yeah. And uh, Mary was pregnant with Jesus when they, they came in contact with one another. John began to shout in his mother's womb. Yeah. You, and you telling me that he had doubt. Uh, is this the same John that when he was at the Jordan River baptizing and he saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, Behold. the Lamb of God, the one that cometh to take away the sins of the world. Is this the same John that say, I must decrease and he must increase? Is this the same John that say, I'm not worthy to lace his shoes? Yes, I would say this is the same John. Some would say, well, how can that be, Walker? Well, you know for yourself, life has a way of pushing us in some corner that will allow doubt to creep into the corner of the, the strongest Christian's mind. Amen. Oh, that young, that young father, that young husband that's doing all he can uh -huh. to provide for his family, but he's still struggling. Yeah. Doubt can creep into your mind. That young wife that's uh, been trying for the longest to get Ever. pregnant. Ever. And now she's seeing everybody getting pregnant, unwed yeah. mothers uh, getting pregnant. People don't even want children getting pregnant. A doubt can creep into your yeah mind uh, to those parents that has that child uh, that, that have that child that's struggling with drug addiction uh -huh. or dealing with some other kind of issue that's not uh, beneficial to the well uh, to their well-being doubt can creep into your mind uh -huh. to that child that had to grow up much too soon because of what's going on in their house doubt uh -huh. can creep into your mind to that uh, retired couple that didn't plan to be dealing with the troubles that they're dealing with in their golden years. Yes, Doubt sir. can creep into any of our minds. Yes, but uh, when doubt creeped into the mind of John the Baptist. Yes, sir. Pastor, uh, I don't want to be critical of John this morning. But I want to be complimentary of John this morning. Yeah, yeah. And I can compliment John because John did something special. Yes, he did. Uh, a lot of time when things are not going our way. Oh, a lot of time when life has dealt us a bad hand. Oh, Many times we, 
We get mad, and as dad would say, we poke our mouth out. And we, we, we go on back home. We, don't, we stop coming to church. Oh, we stop singing in the choir. We stop working on the usher ministry. We stop all together simply because we're upset with God. Well, I want you to know that God, he, he doesn't get disappointed with honest questions from us. But he does get upset and he does judge rebellion. Yeah. Look, John, uh, he could have poked his mouth out. He could have got upset and said, look, I'm, I'm through with all of it, all I've done. And here I am in jail. But John, he sent to Jesus. Yeah. That's a lesson for somebody this morning. If you don't get anything else out of this message, when the, the weight of the world is on your shoulders, uh -huh. don't get mad and throw in the towel, but... Uh, uh, the songwriter said, just a little talk with Jesus. We'll make it all all right. John sent to Jesus and said, now look, uh, I got a question for you. Don't mean to rub you the wrong way, cuz, but I got a question for you because here I am on lockdown. And you hadn't done anything yet. Are you the one? Uh, or should we look for another? I'm almost through and let me give you three points and I'll be in my seat. In a nutshell, Jesus simply say, see for yourself. Because the text say that Jesus didn't say anything initially to those guys. But he went to work for a whole hour. And what was he doing? He was doing something. And I see Jesus. I see Jesus, Brother Taylor. What do I see Jesus doing? First thing I see, I see his power. Yes, I see the power of Jesus. Because uh -huh. the text said he cured many. Yeah. And he gave sight to many. Yeah. yeah, I see the power. It took power, power to give sight to the blind. It took power to open the deaf ears. Power. Yes, I see the power of the Lord. Uh -huh. Yes, the power he demonstrated. That God, he, he really does exist. And that's power. He showed that God really does exist. Uh, how did he do that? Uh, he showed that God, he exists and that he's sovereign. Uh, yeah. He is above and beyond uh, nature. He has power to override the laws of nature uh -huh. by miraculously healing those that were sick. Healing. Healing. That's power. power. I want you to know I still see his power today, Brother Blackman. Uh, I saw his power on last night uh -huh. when he rocked me off to sleep. Yeah. I saw his power when he watched over me all night long, protecting oh, me from all hurt, harm, and danger. Yes, and Brother Blair, I sure enough saw his power this morning when he touched me touched. and shook me from a deaf sleep. Oh, uh, when you're wondering, is he the one Jesus saying, see for yourself? See for yourself. Just look at my, my power. Wow. It took power to heal you when you were sick. Uh -huh. It took power to comfort you when you lost your loved one. Uh -huh. It took power to hold you in a midnight hour. Yes, Jesus said, look, uh, uh, just see uh, my, power. my power. Jesus said, see for yourself, Walker, that I am who I say I am. Uh -huh. I am who the Bible says yeah. I am. Yeah, you ought to see for yourself. Yes, uh, Brother Ben and I not only see his power uh -huh. but I also see the the prophecies of Jesus as the Messiah yes, sir. Yeah, it's in the text lest you think I'm making all of this up oh, Lord. Yeah, Jesus uh, uh, he is who the Bible say he yeah. is look uh, these things that Jesus was doing it was not by coincidence no, no. yeah uh, but the Bible had already foretold in the prophecy of Isaiah uh -huh. that Jesus would do certain things yes. In Isaiah 35 and 5, talked about how he would, uh, he said, Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, uh -huh. and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Yeah, he talked about the, uh, in Isaiah 35 and 6, yeah. talked about then shall the lame man leap, leap. as an heart, uh -huh. and the tongue of the dumb sing, for in the wilderness shall waters break out, yes, and streams in the desert. Look, uh, he wasn't doing these things by coincidence. No. But uh, it was already foretold. Oh, no. The things that uh, the Messiah, the Christ, the anointed one would do. One, 
In Isaiah, the, the 61st chapter, yes, sir. verse 1, it talked about him preaching to the poor. Uh -huh. And it did say that he was preaching to the poor. Yes, sir. Isaiah 61 and 1 says, The Spirit of the Lord, God is upon me, uh -huh. because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek, and he hath sent me to the bind, and bind up the brokenhearted, yes, to proclaim liberty to the captives. And the opening of the prison to them that are bound. Oh, yes, my brothers and sisters. Yeah. Uh, I can see the prophecy of Jesus. Uh -huh. In other words, he is who the Bible says he is. Yeah, yeah. yeah Matthew, uh, he talked more about Jesus fulfilling the prophecies of the Old Testament. Uh -huh. But Luke decided to plug it in in this particular passage. Yes, sir. How Jesus... Uh, uh, he heals the fulfillment of the Old Testament prophets. Uh -huh. So I want you to know that uh, uh, Jesus is saying, see for yourself. See for yourself. Uh, look, uh, I am who they say I am based upon what I'm doing yes, right sir. before your, your very eyes. Uh -huh. Yes, uh, see for yourself. Yet not only do I see his power, and I see the prophecy of Jesus as the Messiah. Uh -huh. Thirdly, and finally, I see the undeniable proof yes, sir. of Jesus being the Messiah. Yeah. Because in the text, uh, Brother Kincaid, Jesus, he tells them, go your, go your way. In other words, go your way and tell John the Baptist uh -huh. the thing that you have seen and the things that you have heard. In other words, you didn't get it by some secondhand uh, uh, means, but you got it firsthand. In other words, go back and tell John what you've seen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can yeah. deny some things that you didn't see. Uh -huh. You can deny some things that you didn't hear. Yeah. Yeah. But as Adam often say that the proof is in the pudding. Yeah, yeah and I, I looked that idiom up, that the proof is in the pudding. Uh -huh. And it said that uh, the original uh, idiom was uh, the proof is in the eating of the pudding. In other words, you know that it's pudding because you tasted it. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it, you can't really say it's pudding by looking at it. Right. You can't say it's pudding because how it smells. Yeah. You can't say it's pudding how it's formed. Uh -huh. But the only way you know it's pudding uh -huh. if you try it for yourself. Yeah. I bid you good day, New Bethel. Uh -huh. And that's the only thing I want to leave you with this morning. Yeah. That you need to try Jesus for yourself. Don't go off with what the, the preachers say. Yes, Don't go off with what the bishop, the apostles, and the prophets say. Yeah. But you ought to try Jesus for yourself. Yeah. yeah, don't don't go off with what Big Mama and Big Daddy say. Uh -huh. But you ought to try Jesus for yourself. Uh -huh. And I'm a living witness. If you try him for yourself, uh, you'll be able to say, not because of what they said. Uh, no. But uh, I tried him, uh, and I saw that he is who he say he is. Uh, yeah, I tried him uh, when I had tears streaming out my eyes. Uh, now I know that he is a tear wiper. I tried him uh, when I couldn't go off to sleep in a midnight hour. Uh, and uh, you know what he did? Uh, he came in my bedroom uh, and rocked me off to sleep. Uh, he's all right. Uh, I tried him uh, when friends walked away and left me uh, and I found out that he is uh, a friend that's still closer than a brother. I wonder have you tried him? Uh, I don't know how you feel about it, uh, but I'm so glad this morning uh, that I saw him uh, and I know for myself now uh, that he is uh, a way out of no way. Uh, he is uh, one that will walk with you uh, and talk with you. Uh, he is uh, one that will hold your hand when the uh, storm of life are raging. Uh, he's all right. Uh, do you know he's all right? Uh, have you tried him? Uh, if you tried him, uh, then you know for yourself uh, that he is the one uh, that the Bible say he is. Uh, he's all right. Uh,
And who does the Bible say he is? He is the one and only begotten Son of God. He is the one that got on the nature train, rode it through 42 generations, got off in Bethlehem of Judea, stayed around for 33 years. But one Friday on a hill called Calvary, I believe what the Bible say about him, that he died. From the sixth to the ninth hour, where he died until darkness covered the earth. He died, he died, he died, he died. But that's not how the story ends. They laid him in a bar tune. I believe, Pastor, that he stayed right there all night Friday night all day and all night Saturday but how many know right early Sunday morning he got up from the grave not with some power but with all power do you know he has power I told you about that power that power it rocked me to sleep last night that power it woke me this morning but what I love about it Miss Katie that power one Monday evening when the sun was sinking low didn't have a God on my side I heard the voice of Jesus say come unto me all ye that labor in a heavy lane and I will give you rest you know what I did in New Bethel I came to Jesus just as I was I was wearied I was wounded and I was sad but I found in him a sweet old resting place and he has made me glad and I saw for myself that night because he saved me he saved me now I can shout glory hallelujah glory hallelujah since i laid my burdens down i feel better so much better he's all right he's all right he's all right i know you're wondering why does he get so excited uh, not because of what daddy said but I tried him I tried him for myself and, and, I, and I do believe that if you try him this morning yeah if you try him for yourself you will get excited too you ought to try him for yourself you don't have to go off what I'm saying don't take my word but just try him for yourself you'll find out that he is a savior and he will save your soul to the utmost will there be one will there be one candidate for baptism by letter by christian experience you ought to try him. see for yourself you don't have to take anybody's word see for yourself romans 10 and 13 so whosoever calleth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You can be a whosoever. You can be a whosoever that can see for themselves. Try him. That say, Lord, I am a sinner. I'm in need of a savior. And I know mama can't save me. Because mama got sin too. Daddy can't save me. He has sin. Because Romans 3 and 23 said, For all have sinned, come short of his glory. And Lord, uh, Romans 6 23 told me what the penalty of my sin is. For the wages of sin is death. But it, it, it didn't stop there. Thank be to God, it didn't stop there. So, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you would accept him, so Lord, I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. And I believe Jesus to be that Savior simply because of what he did on that Friday how he died for the sins of the world he was buried and God raised him from the dead that third day you can believe that you can believe that in your heart confess that with your mouth you shall be saved if you would like to 
If you prayed that prayer and you believe that God has saved you, he has forgiven you of your sins, and you want to become a member of New Bethel, you can give myself a call at 601-605-8262. Or you can call Pastor Emeritus at 601-859-2280. Or you come in contact with any of our deacons. They will guide you in the plan of salvation and how you can become a disciple of Jesus Christ. Won't you trust him? Won't you trust him? He's waiting with outstretched arms, saying, whosoever will, let him come. Or whosoever includes drug addicts. Or whosoever include uh, those that are living promiscuous lifestyle. Or whosoever includes murderers. Or whosoever includes whosoever. Does not matter what you've done. How long you've done it. Whosoever. It includes adulterers. Fornicators. Liars. Whosoever. He will take you in. Won't you try him? Won't you just see for yourself? God bless you. May God keep you. May God forever smile upon you. Amen. At this time, we're getting ready to go. Uh, be mindful to tune in on next Sunday uh, at 10 o'clock. Amen. For our uh, pastoral installation service. We, we thank and we bless God for this church. We thank and we bless God for what he's doing with uh, his pastor, his people in this place. Amen. And, and God is not through with us yet. Uh, there, there, there's a place that God is going to take us. Amen. And I encourage all of you, all of the New Bethel members, I encourage you, get with us now. Don't wait until the product is finished. Amen. Come, come. We, we, we need you. We need all hands on deck. Amen. We need you. We need you. Uh, the kingdom needs you uh, to help expand the kingdom of God. And, and the only way we can do that, we got to continue to reach the loss at any cost. Look, don't let anything stop us from reaching the loss. If you have loss in your household, reach them. Loss in your community, reach them. Amen. Even if they don't ever, don't ever come to this church, if they're saved and get in a church, mission accomplished. God bless you. May God keep you at this time. Let us stand for the benediction. While you're standing, we, uh, we say that today is a beautiful day. We, we encourage you. you we, we've worshiped. Now it's time for you to go and enjoy your family. Get out and do something with the family. And yeah. continue to practice social distancing. Amen. Now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all say together. Oh.